Hi friends, welcome back to my channel and a very special welcome if you're new here. My name is Jen, I'm a certified weight loss and nutrition coach and it's Monday, so it's meal prep day. I have three fantastic recipes for you. Whole, real food, lots of protein, delicious some comfort food or foods that you might not deem as healthy that I've created healthy. So if you're excited, give this video a big thumbs up. Subscribe if you're not, turn your bell on because I do a meal prep every single Monday. All of today's recipes will be on my recipe website. I will link that at the top of the description box. I will be building the recipes and tracking my food as always in the free Trainist app. Trainist is a free calorie tracking app. No ads, accurate, easy to use, and as of March 21st, they are adding some new features where you're able to check in, log your weight, and progress photos all free in the Trainist app. So I will be linking that as well in the description box and I'll be showing you here on the screen how I built all of the recipes and all of the calories, protein, fats, and carbs of each recipe that the Trainist app will automatically calculate when I build it. And don't forget the Trainist app is 100% completely free. So again, I'll link it down below for you. Nutrition coaching where I offer personalized to you macros and calories, highly recommend. This is what I follow to lose 140 pounds. Links and discounts to my favorite Things and come join my Facebook group. We'd love to have you. So let's jump in to this week's meal prep. So I'm about to pop some protein in the oven for the week. Oftentimes I will prep one additional protein. I don't always show it in my meal prep, but I do like to prep an extra protein for dinners, easy dinners or lunches, because as you know, I don't prep a full week's worth of lunches. So I have an extra protein on hand that I can make multiple different meals out of. So today I'm actually going to cook up four 93.7 ground beef patties, season those up, throw them in the oven, so that I have those on hand for the week. Anytime I cook meat, I use a meat thermometer to make sure that it's cooked thoroughly, especially things like chicken, turkey, and ground beef. So I just got this little beauty right here. This is from the brand Typher, and this is a meat thermometer. But this isn't just a boring meat thermometer. She is all digital, done through an app on your phone, wireless, chargeable via USB. Absolutely incredible. We have been using this so much when we grill on our Blackstone Grill. I tell you guys all the time that Troy and I will grill veggies and meat on our Blackstone. We always use this to check the temperature. I use this whenever I cook in the crock pot as well just to make sure everything is done. This is incredible, a must have thermometer. So I'm going to get my burgers going. I have my Typher thermometer set, super easy to set that. I'm going to add my four burger patties to a parchment lined baking sheet. I'm going to season my burgers with Kinder's The Blend. This is such a great burger seasoning. I usually use this or the McCormick Steak seasoning because it has salt, pepper, garlic, everything I love on a burger. And then I always flip them and season the other side as well. So I'm going to just stick probe number one, so they are labeled one and two on the top. I'm using probe number one. I love that you get two because what if you're cooking two different kinds of meats? Then you have the option for the two. We use both of these when we cook on our Blackstone because our Blackstone grill, we usually do multiple kinds of meat. So I went ahead and inserted the probe into my burger and you can see that currently it's registering at 51 degrees. I have it set to cook to 160 degrees and all of that exact same information is here on my phone. So I can monitor the cooking straight from my phone. I absolutely love that. So I'm going to put my burgers in a 400 degree oven. I'll be monitoring everything from the Typher app. The Typher Sink has two times six sensor probes for super accurate ambient and internal temp tracking. View cooking data on your device without using your phone. You could connect your device to your Wi-Fi. You can monitor your cook time on the Typher app. It gives you a pro view that shows you the temperature from all six sensors and more. Typher is the number one in stability and connection distance. Up to 400 feet in open space and up to 65 feet in closed spaces. 
such as an oven. With the ingenious distribution of two probes and six scientifically positioned sensors, the sink is an ideal kitchen gadget and grill temperature detective. Your Typher is an integrated compact design that's going to include the device-based charging case that is equipped with Bluetooth Wi-Fi connection and advanced estimate algorithm. It is also the first thermometer using the aviation grade zirconia ceramic in the actual thermometer probe. So it is high heat resistant and nearly indestructible. It is waterproof and it has a long battery life. It can actually run for over 50 hours and maintain a two hour runtime with a quick two minute charge. You can also track the temperature on your Typher device. So this probe is the probe I'm not using here. So it's registering the temperature of my home. And then the 141 is where we're at with our burger. So we're going to allow them continue to cook until we're at 160. So it's beeping at us because we're at 155 degrees, telling us to remove it from the heat because the burgers will continue to cook once removed from the oven. All right, the burgers are done. That was so easy. I didn't even have to worry about them, pay attention to them. And I love that there's an app included as well. So again, I'll make sure it is linked down below for you. For my breakfast this week, I'm making strawberry banana baked oatmeal. I'm going to add in some protein, of course, just to help reach my protein goal for the day. So let me show you what you'll need. So I'm going to use the Clean Simple Eats protein. This is the Simply Vanilla. I actually just bought myself a new full bag, not even opened yet. I love the chocolate and the vanilla for baking and then for bases of Ninja Creamy ice cream, protein shakes, protein pudding, my protein coffee. The vanilla and chocolate are just the flavors I use the most. So I went ahead and picked up a full bag. I'm going to do two scoops, which is going to give me 40 grams of protein. It's just a really easy way to add flavor, sweetness, and protein. I do have a discount for Clean Simple Eats. I will link it down below for you. You're also going to need rolled oats, no sugar added chocolate chips. I have a mix of lilies and Lakanto, vanilla extract, sugar-free maple syrup, ground flaxseed, milk of your choice. Again, I'm using Fairlife just for the protein, fresh strawberries, bananas, cinnamon, baking powder, and some salt. So to get started on our baked oatmeal, it's actually super simple. I've went ahead and preheated my oven to 375 degrees. So in a large bowl, I'm adding two cups of rolled oats, one teaspoon of baking powder, about a teaspoon of cinnamon. Honestly, I'm going to probably do a tablespoon because I love cinnamon. A pinch of salt, and then we're adding in two cups of Fairlife milk. I'm doing ground flax. You could also do an egg, but I would like the benefits of the flax seed instead. So I'm going to do one tablespoon of ground flax, about two teaspoons of vanilla extract, and mashed banana. I'm going to give this just a quick stir and then we're going to actually add in the protein powder. So the protein powder is an addition that I made to the recipe. So I'm going to add my two scoops of Clean Simple Eat Simply Vanilla and I may need to put in a little bit of water if I need extra liquid because the protein powder was not in the original recipe. So let me fold this in and see if we do indeed need a little extra liquid and if so, I'll just add in a tablespoon or two of water. This looks pretty good. Let me go ahead and add in about half of my cut up strawberries. And I have a quarter cup of chocolate chips. I'm going to add in about half of that as well. And then fold that in. The recipe says to do one mashed banana and one sliced banana. I went ahead and just mashed them both. I mean, really you could do either way, but we are going to fold in those strawberries and those chocolate chips. Oh my gosh, I almost forgot my quarter cup of maple syrup. Whoops, let me stir that in really quick. And then we're going to add the oatmeal mixture to an eight by eight baking dish. I did go ahead and spray it with some nonstick cooking spray. If you reserved one banana in slices, you would add that to the top. But since I didn't, I'm going to add my remaining strawberries. Lola's right next to me because she loves strawberries, so I'll probably toss her a little piece here. And I'm also going to sprinkle my remaining chocolate chips. Look how amazing this looks. I'm going to put this in the oven for 50 to 60 minutes or until it's cooked completely through. You guys, look at this baked oatmeal. I wish it was breakfast right now. This looks absolutely incredible. I did keep it in my oven for a full hour. 
Ooh, I can't wait to have this all week. So I'll go ahead and put points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. I leave the TV on, I'm done with your sad eyes. I can take another night with you on like this. So let's go, I'm sure you can take For my lunch this week, I'm so excited for this. I'm making homemade pizza pockets, pockets but I modified the recipe from store-bought biscuit dough to protein biscuit dough and I'm so excited for this. I've never shared this recipe on my channel. It's really simple and it's so delicious. So let me show you what you'll need. So for the dough, you're going to need non-fat Greek yogurt. So basically we're making essentially a two ingredient dough, but instead of flour, we're going to use the Devotion Nutrition Buttery Blend. This is so good, you guys. It makes the most amazing biscuits, bread, pizza dough, crusts of any sort. It has the most amazing butter flavor and it's going to be, and it is so good for these little pizza pockets. So you're going to need two scoops or two packets of the buttery blend. Now you can buy this in the full size tub or you can buy the little individual packets. I ended up buying a sampler pack of all their flavors to try them. That is actually what I would recommend if you've never tried Devotion Nutrition and you do get two of every flavor, including the buttery blend. So I'll link Devotion down below for you. I do have a discount code and then you'll need toppings of your choice so I'm going to do turkey pepperoni fresh basil and mushrooms and then you'll need pizza sauce and low-fat mozzarella cheese and then butter and some oregano for the top this is optional so I wouldn't skip it and then top it with a little bit of dried oregano I decided that I'm going to add a little garlic salt in with my dough just to make it more pizza vibes so the first thing I'm going to do is add my two scoops of devotion buttery blend to a bowl And then I'm going to add some garlic salt. And then I'm going to add in yogurt until I get the right dough consistency. Rather than just putting in two cups of yogurt, I wanna make sure that I don't add too much or too little. And like I said, I'll just add until I get the right consistency and then I'll let you know how much yogurt I used. So I added some parchment paper, sprayed it with some nonstick cooking spray to a baking sheet. I did end up doing a third packet of devotion. I just didn't have, enough dough for my liking. So I'm going to add all of my dough to the parchment paper. I ended up doing about a cup and a half of nonfat Greek yogurt. Then I always spray my hands with nonstick cooking spray. That way it doesn't stick to the dough, even when I make traditional two ingredient dough, only because it can be a little bit sticky from the yogurt. So I spray my hands with some nonstick cooking spray and we're just going to spread our dough out on the baking sheet. It doesn't really matter how big, about double the size of the dough if it was just in a big ball. And I try to make it a rectangle-ish shape just to make it easier to cut the little pizza pockets. So once you have your dough spread out, we're going to put all of our toppings on one half of the dough. I have a half of a cup of pizza sauce and I'm just going to spread that on the dough. I have some fresh basil that I just tore into smaller pieces. And again, you do whatever toppings you want. I just love a good pepperoni mushroom basil. And then I'm going to put some mushrooms. And then a serving of the pepperoni is 16 slices. So let me start with that and I may end up doing more. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Actually 16 slices is perfect. And then I have half of a cup of light mozzarella. Then you're going to take your dough, this is why I sprayed the parchment really well, and you're going to basically roll it over. So I melted half of a tablespoon of butter and I'm just going to spread that right on top of our dough. Now I know she doesn't look the prettiest. She definitely doesn't look the prettiest. Now if you were to use refrigerated dough, you would have a more aesthetic looking pizza pocket, but you don't have the protein that you do when you mix the Devotion protein and the non-fat Greek yogurt. So I'm okay with it not being the prettiest of pizza pockets. It's going to taste delicious. And then I'm going to add some oregano right on top. I have actually made several recipes using that buttery blend. So good, like I said, biscuits, amazing. You can do these two ingredient biscuits and actually have 
a biscuit side that has protein, bread, all sorts of things that you can do. We're going to put this into a 350 degree oven for about 10 to 12 minutes or until it's cooked through. I just pulled the pizza pocket. Now it's one big pizza pocket for now out of the oven. Look how amazing that looks. I'm going to allow it to sit for about 10 minutes just to cool it a little bit. So our pizza pocket, the big huge one, has cool. I'm going to cut it into six pizza pocket. So I'm going to chop it in half and then I'm going to cut each half into three sections. Look at how amazing that looks with the mushrooms and the pepperoni. These are going to be so incredibly good. Let me go ahead and package these up and I'll be back to share points, calories, and macros. Oh, side note, what I will do most likely is throw each one of these into my air fryer before I have it for lunch. So here are the pizza pockets. I just put them in a storage container. Like I said, I'll pop it in the air fryer for lunch. I'm telling you that Devotion Buttery Blend is game changing for any bread, anything. It tastes so incredibly good. So I will put all the information here on the screen for you. For dessert this week, I'm making cherry crisp. I've been craving some type of sweet crisp so cherry it is let me show you what you'll need you're going to need frozen cherries you could also use fresh cherries you'll just have to pick them so in my opinion frozen is a little bit easier you'll need all-purpose flour rolled oats sliced or slivered almonds whatever your preference is sugar-free maple syrup coconut oil vanilla extract salt almond extract cornstarch or arrowroot powder, cinnamon and lemon juice. So I went ahead and added my whole bag of frozen cherries to a saucepan. I'm then going to do two tablespoons of cornstarch or arrowroot powder. Two tablespoons of lemon juice. And about a quarter teaspoon of almond extract. We're going to bring our cherries to a boil. Once they boil, we'll reduce the heat and allow them to simmer for about seven to 10 minutes. You want to make sure you're smashing the cherries so that you get this nice gooey cherry puree. So I'm making a modification. I decided to go ahead and add some fresh blueberries. Once these cherries started breaking down, there isn't very many. The recipe actually calls for four cups. I should have bought two bags of frozen cherries. So I'm going to substitute and add in a cup and a, a little over a cup of fresh blueberries. That way we have enough fruit for the filling. We're going to make the topping for our crisp. So I have one and a half cups of rolled oats, half of a cup of slivered almonds, half of a cup of sugar-free maple syrup, half of a cup of all-purpose flour. This is a one cup, so I filled it halfway. One tablespoon melted coconut oil, about a quarter teaspoon of almond extract, cinnamon, about a half a teaspoon of vanilla extract, and a pinch of salt. And then we're going to mix that together. And again, this is the topping to our crisp. Look at how amazing this looks. I mean, that looks so good. So I'm going to pour that into my six by six, eight by eight, whatever you have baking dish. I did spray my baking dish with nonstick cooking spray. I really think this cherry blueberry combo is going to be so good. And then we are going to top it with our crumble. And then I'm just going to press that down with the back of my spoon. Just make sure all of that cherry compote is covered. I'm going to put this in a 350 degree oven for 30 to 35 minutes or until our fruit is bubbly and our topping is brown. The cherry blueberry crisp is out of the oven. Look at how bubbly that compote is. I can't tell you how excited I am for this. This is going to be such a great dessert. Even Troy was saying this morning that he was excited for crisp. So I'll go ahead and put serving size points, calories, macros here on the screen for you. this week's meal prep. I hope you enjoyed seeing everything I prepped for the week. I'm also really glad that I prepped those burgers. It'll just make an easy lunch or easy dinner ready to go. I do like to, I will often prep an extra protein just to have on hand. 
I'm loving my Thai fur thermometer. I'll link that in the description box along with the free Trainus app, my recipe website, nutrition coaching, and come join my Facebook group. We would love to have you. Thank you for watching, friends, and I'll see you in the next one. Bye.